Glimpses of Stephen Lawrence, a brief overview of his life, case and legacy. Content note, racism and murder. It's impossible to sum up a life, arguably. We can only get glimpses of it. Stevens is perhaps best described in the words of his friends and family, as someone who was an energetic, cheeky and adventurous child. As someone who was tall and cool and had loads of friends. As someone who was peaceful, easy, smart, sweet. As someone who was always a good ex- person. As someone who wanted to experiment with life. Stephen was born in London in 1974 to parents who'd, met, who'd emigrated from Jamaica in the 1960s. He lived with his mum, Doreen, a teacher, his dad, Neville, a painter decorator, and his younger siblings, Stuart and Georgia. He was an extra in the film For Queen and Country in 1988, and he set up a small clothing business with a childhood friend. He was studying for his A-levels, he worked part-time at McDonald's, and he aspired to be an architect. According to friends at the time, he was looking forward to a Saturday night date, but is unfortunately most well known today for being the victim of a racist murder at age 18. Stephen was killed in 1993 by a racist gang which included David Norris, Luke Knight, Neil and Jamie Accor and Gary Dobson. Their names were given to police 26 times within 48 hours of Stephen's death. As a gang, they had been linked to more than four other racist attempted murders and were caught on video surveillance reenacting such murders, including specifically the stabbing of a black man. From the very beginning, there were catastrophic failures on police part in the case of Stephen Lawrence. This included a failure to deliver first aid as Stephen lay dying in the street, and a failure to take his case seriously, which included failing to do initially door-to-door investigations or failing to search the nearby Brooks estate where the killers were seen heading after stabbing Stephen and where some of the killers had lived. This is reflective of one police officer's comment about Stephen Lawrence's case at the time. Police racism could also be seen in the deployment of spy cops designed to intimidate Stephen's family and friends, such as Peter Francis, who poses as an anti-racist activist in the mid-1990s. His and other spy cops' work included a traumatic arrest of Stephen's friend designed to discredit Dwayne Brooks, a survivor of the killing of Stephen Lawrence of the night, who was falsely charged for drug-related offences. Broader criminal justice system racism is evidence in Stephen's case through the fact that it took 19 years for just two of the five killers to be convicted, despite evidence, and both of whom may be released in just six years' time in 2027. Stephen's murder and case should be situated in a broader context of racism in the police force, wider criminal justice system and society, where evidence shows police are more likely to harass black people through the use of policies such as stop and search and through force, Indeed, even Stephen's own brother, Stuart Lawrence, has been disproportionately subjected to this. Where black people are more likely in relation to white people as well as as well as well um, other people of colour to be disproportionately imprisoned. And where black people are more likely to die through the actions of state institutions, whether the immigration services or police. This is exemplified by the tragic killings and deaths of David Olawali in the 1960s, two more recent deaths such as Carlington Spencer in 2017. There are perhaps three key lessons to take from Stephen's case 28 years after it occurred. This is that the racism is institutional, cyclical, and has, can be gaslighting, as exemplified by the McPherson report in 1999 that declared the police were institutionally racist. And cyclical, as Stephen's traumatic death was made worse by failings in the police and wider criminal justice institutions, notably in allowing his killers to go free for so long. The second lesson or reminder is the profound inertia that exists when it comes to anti-racism in British society. 
The late Lord Macpherson wanted his 1999 report to be a catalyst for permanent and irrevocable change across the whole of society. Unfortunately, the 70 recommendations Macpherson made were, were generally ignored. A pattern of wider inertia, exemplified by five recent governmental reviews into racism in British society ranging from the workplace to the youth criminal justice system, which has collectively produced 375 concrete recommendations for reform that again today have largely been ignored. The 2021 Sewell report denying the existence of institutional racism is a culmination of this inertia. The third lesson is a reminder of the ways in which racism is resisted by those experiencing it, including many of Stephen Lawrence's loved ones, such as his mother, Doreen Lawrence, who sits in the House of Lords today and is an important anti-racist trailblazer in British society, as well as the various anti-racist charities and days that remind us to reflect on Stephen Lawrence and his case and legacy.